All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Right, those of you who watched our MC8 build might remember we fitted an old high tech HS605 BB, which puts out around 95 ounce inches at 6 volts. It was quite a pokey servo back in the day. The trouble is, things have moved on and we expect a bit more out of the servo these days. When we gave the MC8 a run with the old high tech, it did the job, but the steering was very laboured and it didn't feel sharp at all. So, as I'm always interested in trying out some of the cheaper parts, we have this. Eternity Trackstar TS415MG Monster Truck Servo. It's a bit slower than the old 605BB, but it's giving out over twice the torque. Nice. <laughs> On a scale truck like this, a slow servo isn't any concern, so that's just fine. In the box you get the usual bag of arms, grommets, ferrules and screws, including two nice big chunky arms. The servo has this funky aluminium midsection. If the inside is a close fit on the motor, it should also act as a heatsink. It's supposed to be waterproof, so there should be some o-rings in there somewhere. And of course, it's got metal gears with a ball raced output. Sounds promising. Okay, let's crack it open. And we've got all metal gears. Nice. They've chosen metals that should wear nicely. Steel and brass, I reckon. The final gear is nice and chunky, so should take some knocks. I'm not going to pry it off though, but the shaft under the final gear is supposed to be supported by a ball race. So that's good. But it's let down by the bushing in the lid. However, it looks like a standard size, so you could always replace it. The other thing I'm noticing is the distinct lack of seals for the gear train. If you completely submerge the servo, there's a chance water could find its way in, work its way to the pinion and through the motor. Not ideal if you like submarining. On the underside is all the electronics. Looks very neat. The aluminium is indeed machined to fit around the motor. Lovely stuff. Unfortunately, the PCB is soldered to the feedback pot directly, so without desoldering it's not going to come out. But we can see a pair of MT4607 MOSFETs, and another 8-pin chip I can't find any info on. It could well be the controller, but the wires suggest there's some more goodies on the other side. Either way, from what I can see on this side, there's been some thought on the layout, so I'm happy with it. And if we have a look at the bottom cover, there's an O-ring. That'll help with keeping the water out from the electronics. I still wouldn't submerge it though, but the odd splash from puddles will probably be okay. If the specs on this servo don't do what you want, there's a couple of others in the same range. The TS400MG and the TS410MG. The 400 is low profile for touring cars, and if you're doing a custom job and low on space. The 410 is a standard size servo with a bit less torque but more speed than our 415. As for price, I paid just under 7 quid, uh, which is near enough $10 US. Now, assuming it lasts a while, that seems like a pretty good deal to me. Tenergy do some higher end servos. The TS900 series looks rather fancy with its aluminium case, and they're still only 20 quid. Not tried one though, so I can't really recommend them directly. Another good thing to test is the hold and centering. Not going full scientific here. Uh, I've got it hooked up to a servo tester and set near enough center. I'm pushing the arm really rather hard and the arm isn't moving at all. Quite impressive. The next test is to see how well it centers. It should come back to the same center point at 1500 microseconds. Now with just eyeball precision, it looks just fine. Great stuff. Both of these tests often show up problems on budget servos. Ideally, we'd need to extend the arm to 6 inches or so to amplify any errors. But we're not racing here, so this is plenty good enough for me. Not much point in showing how to fit the servo, as that's pretty generic. But if you want to see how the servo gets fitted to the MC8, have a look at the axles and steering video in the build series at about 7 minutes 20 seconds in. The servo has Futaba splines if you're looking for a special arm or a servo saber to fit. It's also Futaba direction. So if like me you switch from a high tech you'll need to reverse the channel. Not a big deal, but it can cause some annoyance with light kits. As you can see the indicators are flashing on the wrong side. 
Nice. <laughs> Easy to fix though, just need to swap the connections around. We'll do that before the next run. So yeah, assuming it has a nice long life, it's a lovely servo for the money. And with that, I think we're done for today anyway. Thanks for watching, like if you liked, and of course, if you want to see when we put up more videos, don't forget to subscribe. After all, it's free. Bye guys. <laughs>